What's up, guys? Howdy, y'all. We are here. Is my chair too low? A little bit. Really? Okay. Let's see. We gotta get it perfect for Bailey. Is that good? Yes, that's good. Okay. How's everybody doing this Friday? It's a windy evening here in Kansas. And uh, I'm drinking peach knee high. I grew up on this stuff. Uh, my mom's family is from Alabama. And so all my growing up years, we'd go down there and we love this knee high soda that we got from down there. And uh, so my little brother was just down there and he got me a bottle. So that's what I'm drinking tonight. What are you drinking, Nick? I've got the absolute best of the Arizonas green tea with ginseng and honey. The absolute best. Mm. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Well, we're going to. Um, we're gonna we're fixing to announce the the thing we've been working on, but we're gonna wait just a little bit and see if any more people join us for a minute or two here. Um, I'll read some comments here. Good evening, guys from Gary. Hey, Gary, how you doing? Boat trainer. Casey says I have a question. Have you heard about a specific tool called a boat trainer by Prairie LLC? Device was first sold by Shields at Amazon. Is that one of those? Uh, is that one of those rubber rubber? Yeah. Deals? I don't know if I if I. I've never really used one of those, to be honest. Have you? I haven't used one, but they seem like a really good idea, just to build up the muscle. Oh, I think they're a fabulous idea. Sorry. With it being rubber, you can dry fire it and not really worry all that much. Yeah. Unless it smacks your arm, then it's not fun. But yeah, it depends how you have it. Yeah. But. Hey, John. Casey, hey Don, hey Bruce. Hey, he's one of them that got one of the tired we bows. With Bruce, yeah, Bruce, yeah, Bruce did, yeah. And we got Chris, how you doing? Longbowman89, how you doing? How you doing, Chaz? There's Matt, your dad. Yeah. He's on. Steve says, good to see you guys. Thanks again for working on my big one recurve last year. Thanks, Shane, for your building advice yesterday for my problems. Oh, yeah, yeah, Steve. He's building some bows. That's cool. Always love to hear that. Hey, Jeff. Wow. We're Stefani. Is that Stefani? Is that how you say that? I think that's how you say that name. And how you do? And Don? Edward? Yeah. Hey, guys. So we've got 45 guys on here. We're going to go for it. We're going to tell you about something we're very excited about. And first off, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you about... Uh, the gentleman that's behind all this, the innovator, the the guy, the genius that invented this, and that would be Craig from BowQuest. You'll probably see him on the comments because he's going to help me in case I in case I mess up whenever I talk about this this new technology that we got here. But this guy is something else. This Craig, I'm telling you, he is one of the hardest working guys I know throughout this whole process. I just, I kept telling my wife, I was like, I just, I'm not having to do anything. He's doing it for me. I just couldn't believe it, how, how smoothly and easily this went, um, working with him and with this new technology. So we're just going to get right into that. And what it is, what we've been talking about, what we've been excited about, and been working, working for for the last two months. Can I say any more other words before I say it? I'm, I'm trying to like... Drag it Build out. the anticipation. Build anticipation. Well, <clears throat> the longer we hold off, the more viewers we get. Well, because we're it. Uh, we just went down. Never mind. Okay, <laughs> we dropped one. We oh dropped. crap! We better say it. Yeah, we better tell them. Yeah. So what? What Craig has? He approached me with this idea, and immediately I loved it. I was like, "This is so cool." And uh, so what it is is it's a little electronic tag and it goes on your bow behind the calf hair rest and it's really tiny when he sent them to me I was really surprised but it's it's what like maybe a three-quarter inch long by half inch wide at the most yeah it's it's itty bitty tiny. and it's got three of adhesive on it and it goes behind the calf hair rest this bow has one on it and I know I'm pretty far away from the camera. You can't see. You can't see. Pull up with the YouTube live stream going. 
but let me tell them how it works, all right? So it's itty bitty, and you put it behind this, this calf hair rest, and what it does, yeah, bring that camera over here, Bailey. That's what I'm talking about. Now, check this out, guys. So it's behind there. You can't see it. It's, it's low profile. You cannot even see it on there. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to just peel this back and show it to you. Right there. Check that thing out. I mean, it, it, it literally is thinner than a piece of paper. It's right there if you can see it. Um, so what that is, it's a bow tag. And BowQuest is the company that builds them. And Craig, he's the innovator and the designer and the genius behind this. But it is an electronic footprint for your bow. And it's really cool because when you get a bow from Great Plains, you can hold your phone to it, whether it be Android or iPhone, you just hold your phone to it. With an unlocked phone, you just hold it up there and it'll buzz a little bit and something will pop up on your screen, a link. You click that link and it's going to take you, and we're, gonna, we're fixing to show you that here in a minute. I'm just going to explain it and then we're going to show it to you. But it opens up Great Plains Traditional Bow Company, you know, thanks for buying a Great Plains bow. On that, it's going to have all the bow specifics of your particular bow. Like, for instance, on this one, you've got Eastern Red Cedar, Coca-Cola Riser, all this. It's going to say all that on there, and it's going to have the, the specs on there and all that stuff. With your each one of your bows that you buy from Great Plains is going to have all those personal attributes on it. So then it's going to have link. And I'm, going to, I'm just going to run through this, and then we're going to show it to you. But... It, it has a, then it's going to have links when you get a welcome video. It's a private video. It's not open to the public, and it's a little shop tour. It's, um, it's going to tell you where to set your brace height, um, how to string your bow. And But now I'm getting to the good part. This None of this is the good part. This is just thanks for buying a Great Plains bow. So here's the cool part. So on this bow tag by BowQuest, this bow will now have a history and if you kill an elk with this bow you can go in there on that bow tag and you can put pictures you can put videos you can put on on november let's see elk season you do in september okay let's say september 18 2025 i killed this bull and you can have you can tell your whole hunting story you can have videos of the hunt and that that will be attached to this bow for as long as this bow is around because if somebody else gets it you just switch ownership and the new owner takes possession of the bow with with his own um, pin code that comes with the bow and then but that history stays with the bow so if it's your grandpa's bow you can go back years from now 50 years from now and see grandpa killed this white-tailed deer in Missouri with this bow and there'll be a picture of it with grandpa and the deer super 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 cool so it you can add all that stuff in there and personalize each bow every bow will have its own unique tag every great plains bow from now on if you buy a great plains bow it will come with a bow tag pre-installed behind this calfskin rest it's already personalized all right all right one more thing i'm going to talk about mm -hmm before we show you is well, this is something we're working on but it's in progress and that is um, the technology is there and we're gonna we're gonna wait until it gets more viewers but you're gonna be able to uh, when you're hunting with this bow you will be able to join live hunt so if somebody else is filming their hunt you can you'll be able to watch them hunt through the bow tag you're sitting in your tree stand you're bored your Diet Coke and Jolly Ranchers are gone. You're not as high as you was a couple minutes ago. Well, you might be still high in the tree, but your Diet Coke and Jolly Ranchers is worn off. But And then you're bored. So what do you do? You, you say, okay, Johnny Fremont, he's hunting wild boar in Texas, and he's filming it. But he's using a Great Plains bow. So you click on that, and you watch him kill that big old boar. While you're on your hunt, you watch their hunts. So that's coming. That's not quite there, that, but that will be available in the future. We're not quite there with it yet. Okay, so now we've, we've said all that. 
super cool stuff. We're going to show you how this works. All right. So, go right. up. Let's see. Link pops up. Click on that. And it pops up. Yeah. Okay, the dog knocked a bow tube down. So check this out. So this this bow is my personal hunting bow. So let's let's look at the attributes. So it's, it, the manufacturer is Great Plains Traditional Bow Company, 48 pounds at 29 inches, 58 AMO. Here is actually what's in the bow. It says Eastern Red Cedar Limbs, Cocobola Riser with FR4 Wave and turquo Turquoise Mosaic Laminations. Check it out. That's exactly what's in this bow down to the very last detail ram's horn tips and so then you can collapse the attributes and you come down here you can click on there there you have the intro video it's a private video it's only for the guys that buy great plains bows it has instructions on stringing your bow you know bow care brace heights all the brace heights are on there for all the bows and uh, here's what i really want to show you check this out this is an ai shot coach so you can ask this thing any question. Ask it a question, Nick. Let's see. Just, just talk to it. Let's see if my earbuds are Ask it are what the brace height of a, an SR Swift is. Oh, it's making me want to... It wants me to sign in. Oh, yeah. Just type it in then. All right. So what's the brace height well, you can on type fast. an SR That's Swift. why it always has typos. Also got big thumbs, so I just kind of mm -hmm. type. So let's see what it says. We typed in what's the brace height of the SR Swift. Look what it pulls up. The SR Swift recurve, designed for compactness and efficiency in hunting scenarios, typically features a brace height that's been finely tuned to balance speed and forgiveness. While I can't specify the exact measurement, Oop. so that one it doesn't know. <laughs> okay, but does it not say on that one? Um, I'm not seeing numbers. Okay, because I pulled it up right before we started. It said the exact brace height. But it is an AI, artificial intelligence here. So we're, like, it should learn as stuff yeah. gets input. Yeah. But, so let's ask it, um, what, let's ask it something else. What do you want to ask it? Let's see. I know we're not reading comments. Why are my arrows hitting left and high? Why are my arrows hitting left and high? Let's check this out. Arrows hitting left and high can be attributed to uh, attributed to a few key factors. Firstly, it might be an indication of your release technique. If you're inadvertently applying side pressure to the string with your fingers or thumb release, it could cause the arrow to deviate. Secondly, your bow's rest alignment could be slightly off affecting the arrow's initial direction. Lastly, consider your stance and grip. Tension in your bow hand or an inconsistent anchor point can influence arrow flight. Have you recently made any form adjustments to your bow setup or your shooting form? So, this thing is this thing is awesome and the longer that it goes, the smarter it will get because it's it's going to be able to learn from from the input from the answers it's given. So, um, let's, let's catch up on a few of these comments. Do we got anything that specific, like a question about? Yeah, so like a built in manual plus balance as a gift. Yep. Yeah, demo gremlins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right, Craig. They'll, they'll get you. Um, but yeah, so. The potential of this thing is just is just going to be awesome, and if you have, if you already have a Great Plains bow, um, you you will be able to buy a bow tag for your bow from us. Or actually, we're working on that, but that that will be that will be available to you in the near future, and you can add it to your bow. Very simple to install, and it is so easy to use. You just hold your phone on there. There's no learning curve. We we got them in the mail Tuesday, Monday, yeah, Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday. And the Maybe first one Wednesday. we tried, it was just instant success. So, um, let's see. Craig, 
But did I miss anything? Did I miss anything that I, you want me to add on, on the bow tag? The, and, oh, I wanted to say, though, that uh, also the tech support that you will receive from Great Plains and through the bow tag is going to be awesome because not only can you reach out to us or we can help you, the bow tag will have a lot of loaded stuff on there, but Craig over at BowQuest, this guy is very smart. He's been a traditional archer for many, many, many years. He loves it. He lives it. And he's going to be able to help too. So we got the right guys able to help you on this. Okay. Well, let's track my bow is stolen. Well, let's track the Great Plains bow if stolen. I don't know. I don't know that question. Um, that's a question for Craig. Maybe he could reply on that. Did you get my dad's bow yet? Yes, we did. Yes. Yeah, that right came here. in. Yep, we got it. We got it. We found the we found the broadhead scrape and everything. Yeah, Bill's Bill's uh, Bill's dad uh, scraped the side plate with a broadhead, and he he wants us to restore it, but he wants us to leave that broadhead scrape in there because that's sentimental. So that's pretty cool. Damn, that's an old bow, but it's that's a cool bow. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Is there anything you can think to add about the bow tag? Not really. It's a really cool technology that I think the coolest part about it is at the end of the day, we're building heirlooms. These, yeah. these aren't just for you. These are for your kids, and it's going to get passed down. They're, the company's been around, let's see, 89 is how long? You mean Great Plains? Yeah. Yeah, 1989, so... 30, 35 years, 35, 30, 30, yeah. 36 years. And there's 35. still bows. Hmm? 35? 35. 35 yeah. years. And there's still bows from back when it started floating around. We see them come into the shop to get refinished. Yeah, like this. Uh, yeah. What is right there. Right here. This bow here. That's the first serial number, and it still shoots great. This is the first recorded Great Plains serial number that we have on record. Now, that being said, it's number three. 3430 so we don't have the record books before that and I don't know what happened to them but but this is the very first serial number that we have it's, it's one of the original three-piece longbows from Great Plains it's quite a bit different than we build them now the trap is very severe but it actually shoots amazing made out of tulip wood <coughs> so but that's an old enough bow that we don't know much of the history about it other than what's in our log books. That's the deal. But if it would have had a bow tag, yep. you we might know see who all owned yeah. it, what, what they, they did, what they, they killed they were, with it. Yeah, if they were hunting with it. If, yeah, maybe they won a 3D tournament. And, you know. There's one over there, right over here, that um, is an earlier serial number than that one. Yeah, but we don't have the record book for yeah, that. Earlier. I know. Yeah. Uh, and you know how cool it would be to you get your dad's bow or it gets passed on you and you scan it you've got all of his up pictures that he put on there all of them uploaded you've got you can put journal entries on there right yeah you can put yeah. journal entries on there you've got his journal entries you've got everything tied yeah. to that bow and that that's yeah. just you that's can have a, a handed down legacy um, and one thing, this, this bow tag does not work off batteries. It's simply a, a card reader, basically. So it's never going to run out of battery power. If your phone has batteries, the bow tag has batteries. So it's, it's basically impervious to, to uh, breaking at all. Let's see what Craig says here. I have my dad's old bear reefer, my cherry ship, but I don't know what he did. My bows have tags with, with my hunt. All my kids will always have every hunt I did. Yep, that's it right there. That's it. And yeah. comment right above that when bows talk over the history. Yeah. You know, we're fixing that problem where the bow can't tell you everything it's done. Yeah. That's that's the coolest part about it. Yeah. Yeah. It and there was another one in here. 
in Germany it's not legal to upload. Can you? Yeah, you can upload yeah. it. You can record whatever you want. If you go to a competition and you take third place or first place, you can put pictures in there, videos, record the whole experience. Um, and yeah, that don't, that don't if you film your entire 3D hunt, you can, or 3D hunt, uh, 3D shoot, you can throw that on there, right? Yeah. Yeah. The coach can even talk with you like a phone call. That might be Craig's buddy that was going to join. I'm not sure, because it sounds like he has knowledge of this product. Um, I'm going to go up to Doug Price's before that one goes too high. He says, what's the go-to one, two, three, flex, three, flex, longbow unit? I just want to address that real quick while it's there. Um, B model? Yeah, that, that would be our, our uh, reflex, deflex, our B model bow. And the go-to 64 inch, all around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it depends on what your draw is, of course. If you got a 32 inch draw, you don't want a 64 inch right. long bow. But, you know, up to 29 inches or so. Uh, nine and a half. Yeah, 64 inches Perfect. is real good. It's a lot of guys want the smoothness. The longer your limbs are, you're wasting energy moving the limb instead yeah. of putting it into the air so you're suffering speed. Yep, that's, that's exactly right. Dog dog. Yeah. Rex says, can we see one? Um, I, we are, did we put them all on already? They're all gone. We had a bunch of them. But I think you feel the rest back on your a little bit or is it stuck stuff? Well, are you, Rex, are you talking about oh, the B-model longbow or the bow tag? Do we have a B-model longbow? No, like I was saying, they're yeah, all they don't really float around. They though. don't last very long. Oh, there, Craig answered the one back at your question about your bow. When you replace the screen, what happens? Actually, he just literally asked your bow as answered. Yeah, that's all. Okay. Rex says BMO. Here, I will. Do we have one float now? Let me see if I can go find one. Yeah, go see if you can find one, Nick. With those things, about the minute we put them on the website, they're gone pretty quick. We have a real so, I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, in the spray booth, we've got that one, the older one. That's a tomahawk. Yeah, but it's the same bow. Yeah, kind of. The same form. It's <laughs> not how I build them. But, uh, let me see if I can find a B model. I have to send you my old real Bravo. Yeah, sure. Um, Chris says, I just finished making a recurve for my son. It would be cool to put one on it. Yeah, that um, that would probably be a question for Craig. And you can, if you just look up BowQuest, um, you, could, you could probably do that. We haven't ironed out all the details yet on selling them after market, like just selling the individual bow tags. That will be available in a couple weeks from us, but we haven't ironed all those details out yet. Right now, what we do have in production is every single new bow from Great Plains will have one. And so that that is going, and that's gonna be from here on out. We wanted to announce it right now because guys are gonna be getting their bows from us, you know, every day. And they're going to be having these on here, on there. So that's why we wanted to announce it tonight. But the uh, aftermarket ones, just the bow tags, not all the details are ironed out on that. But you could hit up BowQuest and ask them about that. All right. B-model off our defect rack. Okay, yeah. Because it's the only one I could find. Yeah, thanks, Rex. Yeah, this is a defect. Um, I'm going to step up close. Can you bring the camera up here, Bailey? Um, nope. <laughs> no, no. This is an absolute gorgeous bow, and it is a screaming awesome shooter. However, it's made out of wood that doesn't want to be a bow. No. It's made out of black and white ebony, and every once in a while, ebony is notorious for not releasing its moisture. We do not know what happened here, but if you look right here, there is a delamination underneath there. Um, we tried... Honestly, that's the only one we've ever had that did that particular failure. Sometimes you just don't know. This is a B model. This is a 45 pound, 64 inch ammo. With carbon and foam. It's got carbon and foam, <laughs> black and white ebony. This here is redwood burl. And then black and white ebony here with the access deer tip. This bow, when it was shooting, was incredible. 
um, we absolutely loved it, and it broke our hearts when it when it failed when it delamed there. We tried to fill it with glue. I mean, I would probably give it to somebody at some point, but I'm not going to guarantee anything about it. But uh, yeah, that's our B model reflex deflex. You can see the limb profile, and it's a great bow. Same bow they use on Naked and Afraid XL. Yup. Tough as nails. Oh, Craig says, yes, you can add it with any bow. Easiest way to probably give us just a bit. Yeah. Agree. And order a cafe arrest and chain with tag on it. Stick it on your son's bow. Yeah. Good answer, Craig. Like I said, we're not quite there. We wanted to announce it tonight because we are there with the Great Plains bow. So, all right, what else we got here? Going well trip outdoors. How stinking cool. Makes a beautiful legacy piece like one of your bows. Thank you. Hold the actual memories for the next generation and to be able to create a track archery community. Yeah, that's why we're so excited. I think it's going to catch on. I think it's going to be really, really cool. Ooh, Steve says, how many layers do your tip overlays normally have? Is there a point where too many adds too much mass and affects speed? Excellent question and yes. You do not want to be, get big old huge tips. Um, we used to make our tips a lot bigger, and that invariably will affect performance. Now, if you have a material like G10 or FR4, even black glass or glass of any kind, glass is surprisingly strong as a tip overlay to protect your, your bow um, from the stream. However, um, because glass is you know, unilateral. It's got it's got um, lineal strands in it. Um, I I would prefer something more like G10 or FR4 because usually for sure FR4 because you've got more crossweave buildup in the FR4, which is actually stronger. Um, but to answer your question a little more to the point, um, if you're gonna put a bow tip on, I would never go over a quarter inch thick on an overlay. Yeah, because every time you add mass to that tip, you got to think what causes hand shock in a bow is that sudden stop of those limb tips. Mm -hmm. And the more mass you have, the more energy it's going to carry. And so if you have lighter weight limb tips, A, they're going to move faster, which is going to make your bow faster. And B, you run in, the less you have trying to jump out of your hand, the less hand shock you're going to have. Yeah, imagine if you would put a lead fishing weight, if you would hot glue it onto the end of an arrow, and then you would flip it like that and then try to stop it, versus taking the lead weight off and just doing that. Well, obviously, the weight on the end is going to try to jerk out of your hand. Same with the bow tip. Less is more. Now, obviously, you, you don't want to get to the point where you're actually getting so thin that you're compromising the protection between the string and the bow limb, but you definitely don't want to go too much. Probably answered that question too much. Okay. Where are we at? Oh, that's it. Bill, yeah, we did he ask how you we did get your dad's bow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's old bear bow. I wanna say that's like pre-compounds or like early compounds, like when compounds were mm -hmm. just coming out. It's sitting right by me. Yeah, it's... I'm protecting it. Okay, yeah. I gotta... I'll look at that real quick. Okay. It's a really cool bow, and... This... is just a cool bow. Yeah, now, if this had a bow tag... Oh, yeah. Of course, back when his dad had it, you wouldn't have had the technology to, you know, cell phones and all that stuff. Right. But, um, but it's got a lot... Just for as old as it, the technology in it, where well, it's I can got take a lot of look, mass in the riser. Yeah, I can take one look at that handle, and I can tell you that bow has been carried for hours. Oh yeah, where you can literally see worn. where the hand went around there, and just it's just worn down, just right there. So, and that's but just is that a Kodiak? Uh -huh. Super Kodiak. Super, super Kodiak. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it's got a lot of mass in the riser. It's got almost 90 on the yeah. limb tip. It's... Yeah. So on these old bears, like this this one here, you've got a tip overlay of about... 
uh, it's about three, no, it'd be about an eighth of an inch, honestly. Um, maybe just a hair over an eighth of an inch, but um, that makes the bow tip pretty fast. And you do have to be careful that you get a deep enough spring groove in there. And we're seeing, we're seeing on some of the newer bare bows, we're seeing failures in the tips because of improper um, tip protection or like cutting the spring groove too deep. So you do have to be careful, but those are, those tips are about right and they're really thin and low profile. So, all right. Julian Delgado says, hey Nick, I don't have a bow question, just wanted to say hi and miss you, buddy. Do you know him? Yeah, hi Julian. <laughs> hi Julian. Um, do you make any 52 to 55 inch one piece reachers? Uh, yes, we do. Um, we we have what we've been doing for guys that want the short recurves is we we modify our youth recurve right here. We modify this and just change it into an adult grip and a little bigger grip. Yeah, a little more reinforcement. Yeah. You know, instead of just having one spar through the center, we throw a larger piece of FR4 in it, yeah. carve it a little different, and we change the tapers. They're wicked fast, and they are um, a sweet little shooter, but they're gonna it's, stack. It's 52 inches. So if you don't have a 20, you know, if you have anything over about a 25, 26 inch draw, it's gonna stack up on you pretty quick. But it's gonna be fast though. Yeah, it's, it's designed for short draws. In the future, I will be designing both a recurve and a longbow that will accommodate guys that have a really super short draw. And these will be fully adult bows because um, I've got a lot of requests for that. Just don't, haven't found the time to do it, but that's that's coming. Yeah. Momentum energy versus speed energy. Yeah. Referring to the tips. Uh, yeah, that could be referring to the tips or also arrow. It's yeah, a lot of guys are going for speed. That's what compounds are trying to do. They're getting more speed mm -hmm. with a yeah. recurve. We've got 28 pound bow, and I was was shooting what are those like 600 grain arrows. Yeah, they're still moving along real well. Yeah, and that's 20 grains per pound over that. Yeah. I just keep sitting here. I'm, I'm sitting here. And I just, I just, I'm just thinking that I wish I could show. I wish you guys were in, here in person though to see this bow tag. And it's the to it's see how it, it, it is the coolest thing. I just wish you were here and you could see how it worked in person because it, it is just the coolest thing. And but, we got new hats. Yeah, Nick's wearing his bow quest hat. I was gonna wear mine, but I forgot. Um, Craig sent us new hats. So, Randy Sorati says, do you have scratch and dent stones? We do. Yep. Here it is. My bow quest hat from Craig. So cool. Right in the Caligus. They're an awesome hat. Yeah. Check it out. Okay. Um, Randy, we do have scratch and, and, and dent sales. Those, I don't know. I need to do something where I categorize that and maybe make a... On my website, if you subscribe to my website, you will be notified first uh, when when new in stock bows become available. But what I'm thinking about doing is making a a special place for um, factory defects, um, scratch and dent stuff like that, and then also have the subscription to that, so you can go and subscribe, and then you'll be notified when a scratch and dent comes up. The reason I would do that is because when I put one on the website, they're gone so fast that people can't see them because usually, you know, obviously we're going to take money off of them. Um, and we're not going to sell you a bow that is structurally compromised. That's not going to happen. So you're going to get a good bow. It just may be cosmetically challenged. You know what, though? We do have one. Uh, there's one of those B models has bubbles in the glass. This one here is a cosmetic defect. Is it that one or the one prior? No, it's, yeah, one. it's that one. Is that the 28? Or? Yeah. Bring that camera up here, baby. This is this is a cosmetic defect right here. I don't know how much it's... It's, it's 
I know it's on the web. Yeah, that's that 28 pound. The riser is 100% perfect. Um, it's a beautiful B model. Now, this is a Faraday light bow. This is a 64 inch. Um, but the cool thing about light pound. bows is you can shoot them all day. Oh, man. And with summer coming up and 3D oh, man. season. For a, for a competition, but like for a for 3D. A yeah. Oh, man, this would be an incredible bow. It's, um, it's nice and long. It, it, it's basically not going to stack on anybody. But I want to show you, I, hopefully this shows up on the camera, but if you look real close, look in the glass here, you'll see these little white specks. And that is little air bubbles um, underneath there. So it's a cosmetic defect. It's not going to break. If it does break, we will warranty it. Um, now, because this is such a nice bow, it, you know, there's not a huge sale on it. I think it's $200 off. I think it's what Something it is. like that. Yeah. But it's a gorgeous little bow. I don't think, just browsing through the website, you might see it and not realize it's, it's in the, you know, factory defect, which is why I need to have a site on the website that's just factory defect. It would it'd probably always be empty, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's, the thing is, at the end of the day, we're building springs out of fiberglass. And yeah. Air, yeah. Which it should cool. not work. Yeah, it's it's a spring made out of fiberglass and wood. And yeah. Sometimes the wood is gonna do what natural things do and just kind of break. Get on up here, dude. I know where you want to be. Leo keeps being but a little. If you uh, fart, I am gonna <laughs> dump you so fast. <laughs> Let's see. Scratching down, you got it. Dude, you got the worst fart. I'm gonna say, not you. Well, I was going to say, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Leo's over here, and every so often he'll nudge my foot. He's yeah. up under the table there. Let's see. You guys grind, create your own tape. Yeah. Yeah, we make all of our, everything at Great Plains is made in-house. Absolutely everything. Obviously, we don't lay up our own glass. I mean, we buy the fiberglass strips, strips but we make everything in-house. And yeah. how many tapered lamps are you using in RD? Four to six. Yeah, four to six. It, it depends. Um, one of the biggest mistakes that happens in a lot of longbow bowyers is putting too few um, in in a longbow. We just like we reviewed that Senlita. Yeah. That Senlita archery longbow. What it had two laminations in it. Yeah. Well, it's sitting right behind us there. But when you go that thick, three. It's got three. But one of them was 125,000, like it was yeah. full eight to inch. But at the same time, those three-piece longbows are reworked only had two laminations. Well, different limb profile. Yeah, entirely different limb profile. Yeah, but rule of thumb, you don't want to... The more know. laminations, the smoother it is. To a certain extent. To an extent. If you go too far, you're basically building... You can go far enough I to where, at, by the, if, like if you had ten in there, you would have so many glue lines in there that one of your laminations would be a solid glue line. That is, the, that's a no-go, but um, it's hard to describe that. It's really hard to, I don't know, you'd have to work here for a week. <laughs> Two. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to describe I, that. I've worked here for a month, and I don't even know. Yeah, <laughs> at least three months. <laughs> three my years. Okay. Let's see. Casey says, my brother has a 45-pound bed here, but he's... Like he's got $25 for his dad's bow. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Is it Casey? Interesting. Okay, yeah, you, you, you answer questions. I gotta All see right. what that is. You're gonna answer questions because uh, there's uh, uh, angry kid noises going on outside. Anyway. About the delamination, the delaminated bow you showed earlier, does that affect its accuracy? Would you sell it? I'm not sure if we'd sell it just because we're worried about if it is going to actually be a total failure or not. Um, it was. Here it is. Sorry about that. That was. My kids are definitely their own unique brand because he was not heard. He was just roaring at some for some reason. But so. on the delaminated bow, would we ever sell it? And I, I don't know if I would trust it with it being that big of a bubble. It's more 
Tell you what, man, you want it, you pay the shipping. You can have it. Oh, that would be my mom there. <laughs> oh, that was your mom. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hi, mom. How are you doing? <laughs> Let's see. Good support group, though. Oh, yeah. Deb reads to make this thinking. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a taper block where one side's just slightly higher than the other. And yeah. There's a weird long haired guy that sits at the grinder and has a yeah. pair of micrometers there and passes it about 4,800 times until it's perfect. Your mom watches everyone? Yeah. Oh, so does my mom. Rex too. says, Can I pet that dog? Yes, you can. These dogs are awesome, but they're. They are aggressively cuddly. They are. They're GSPs, though, so they're full of energy, but they love us so much. Yeah. Casey said, I got a boat before I knew I was left that dominant. My brother bought a bow in high school when he stopped using his compound in his old boat. That's interesting. Wood is an imperfect material. Yes, it is. Glad I'm not the only one that has their GSP on their lap. Best dogs ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they got to be involved, man. They, they got to be involved. Yeah. Leo. <laughs> Seems like Bear Shane or Cody from Magnum. Just a little late. What is the new product Shane was talking about earlier today? Um, yeah, and I, I'll go over it real quick for those that have just joined. I mean, real quick. But basically, what it is, James, it's a bow tag that goes on your bow, and you, you scan it with your phone, and you can add in the history of your hunts, your videos, your your photos. Um, you can you can write about your hunt, and and uh, it's got a lot of videos and links from us. There's a welcome video there, lots of bow information. It's got AI. Uh, shot AI where you can ask the computer questions. It's really super cool, but it'll be on every single Great Plains bow uh, Every brand new Great Plains bow and if you send one in to get a rework done on it we'll, We can put one on for you then too. So that's just a little quick rundown What combos have mesquite? So the Texas hunter combo has mesquite Anytime we have pretty mesquite, I'll yeah. throw it on stuff randomly. Yeah, but basically the two combos that I have in the Great Plains lineup that have mesquite are the Great Plainsman and the Texas Hunter. So, uh, you know, <laughs> Leo, he wants love. Leo doesn't know he's a big dog. Tom Burrow said I would pay the shipping. You want that bow, Tom? You can have that bow. Um, I don't know how long it's going to last. I don't know if it's gonna explode. I don't know. I, I don't. I. I'm. Yeah. <laughs> maybe we should. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we should leave it strung <laughs> in the corner for a week. You know, you can have it as long as we're not. We don't. We may it. have you sign a disclaimer yeah. first. Because <laughs> it's. I mean, I don't think it would fail. It. I don't think it would blow up even if it did fail. Because I mean, you've got the whole back of it is perfect. Mm. Um, well, here's my fear on that. With that being how that's going to bend, if that does fail, that's shoving that piece of fiberglass directly into the top of your hand. You might. That's... I don't want anybody to get hurt. I think we leave it strung for a week. If. How about this? Yeah. How about this? We leave it strung for a week. We shoot it. And if it's still functioning you know, perfectly, that would be a good idea. we send it to Tom. Yeah. We may even overlay it with something just you can't do you can't it. Oh, it doesn't pay to hide it. I mean you yeah you can't really oh I got an idea you know what we could do dude I, I got it hmm. all we got to do is shave this down to the riser and then yeah. then we overlay that like that fit a piece to that and that will tie that in sure enough that would work that would work because my original thought on that was take some cow horn that's got the, the black and white yeah, and then come in here, grind that a little smaller, and then overlay that piece of cow horn, and do a real long overlay past the fade outs on that. Well, I'm more concerned about about. Um, well, I was thinking it would tie in after we ground that down, because yeah. we could force glue back in there, right? Yeah, but cow horn is that real strong? Or it's relatively strong. It might work. I would rather use a piece of glass though. Probably. I don't know. Yeah. Either way. Um. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll see if I can... Maybe we should make a video seeing if we can save it. It's probably going to look like the south side of a northbound cow. Well, but saving worry. it wouldn't be the hard part. It's making it look nice while being yeah. saved. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, Jeremy says, I don't live too far away. I live south of Dodge City. What? Cool. We got a local. If I was wanting to go but would like to try a few before I ordered one, how could I do that? Well, if you live close to us, Jeremy, come on out. Yeah, jump in your truck, roll down, you can shoot every single one of them here. And tomorrow we're going to be... Oh, yeah. Gonna, yeah, there's a shoot in the garden. We will Pierce be... Pierce, it's up it's by Pierceville. Right behind the airport. Yeah, if it's High Plains Archery, is that it? I think. I'll have to look at it again. There's a 3D shoot. Yeah, it's High Plains Archery. There's a 3D shoot up by Pierceville, Kansas, and we're, we're, we're going to be there tomorrow. And we'll be bringing some of our bows uh, with us, so if you're in the area. Yep. High Plains Archery 3D. Club 3D Tournament, Saturday, April 6th. Adults, 25 for registration. Youth is 15. What time does it start? And registration, 8 to 9. Shoot starts at 9. Okay. So if you're in the area, I know that's not going to be very many of you, but uh, come shoot some Great Plains bows. Yeah, we'll take a handful with us. So yeah. Yeah, we will. So we'll go show how bad a shot we are. Yeah, I have. It's going to be bad. <laughs> I haven't actually shot in a while. Yeah. Yes, video save the new model. What is that? Like? Yeah, saving. Oh, this. oh, yeah, got you. Yeah, yeah, we should do that. I mean, I'm pretty sure I can fix it, but can I fix it and make it pretty? And make it pretty. Um, I may struggle with that one. Well, it's like that tip that you fixed where it had sheared off. Yeah. It doesn't look factory, but it doesn't look bad. No, it doesn't. It, 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 I mean, you can tell it's different. You can, yeah, you can tell it's a repair, but it's yeah. a very well... It's like uh, bow ties and tabletops. Yeah. So it says, I've made a couple board bows in an Osage shelf, but I would love to have a tag on one. I have. I made so... I made so my son have the deal effect. I'd love to see what you have one of those tags for. Yeah, Don, these tags, they're just... They're just super awesome. I'm probably talking about them too much. But they're just so cool, and Craig, just the best tech support you could ask for. So, yeah, there is so many options for these um, in the future. She says, could you describe how you lay out the handle on a one-piece longbow relative to center? How far is the air shaft? All of our shelves are one inch above center, um, ideally. Um, you, you, don't want to, you don't want to get your hand or your hand muscle um, anywhere close to where you can be cut by fletching. But you want to get that shelf down as close to the fulcrum of a bow as possible. The fulcrum, the pivot point of the bow, should be the exact center. The reason that is, is because that you have minimum movement by your hand moving. You have the least amount of movement, and so your accuracy stays really good if you've got steady hand support. But now, if you go way below the shelf with your pivot point, or your shelf is two inches above your pivot point, Every little move that you make will be magnified way, way more. It's all about leverage. So this one, the center point, is right there. Yeah, it's way down here on this San Lita. Way and too low. What you notice when you're drawing it, it changes the feel of the draw substantially. And it makes you, when you shoot, want to yeah. hit the bow forward. Yeah, because right. what you got going on is, is this, this part right here is way longer. I mean, your center, your center's down Pokey. here, but your hand is up here, so this part's way longer. So this is a big old, Pokey. big old flagpole waving down here, and this is a little bitty short. So if you move it just a little bit, this little, this guy's gonna move a whole lot. So that pivot point is critical. One inch above center for the shelf is ideal. Um, you can one inch above center is so close that you can get by with tilling bows even if you wanted to. Um, I wouldn't, we don't do that. We're gonna till them perfectly, but but it, because it's so close to the fulcrum or the pivot point, you could get by with that. Poor Loki's sad that his friend had it out. Yeah. Okay. We got, we got 11 minutes left here. Let's answer some more of these questions. I'm 26 and a half inch draw. Can't pull more than 45 looking for a short pass bow to stand. And blind hunt. Yeah, Don, our little, um, our youth bow modified to an adult bow would be fantastic. Oh, yeah. One of the problems that guys with short draws run into, and this is something that needs to be addressed by bowyers worldwide, 
is everybody is building off a 28 inch platform. And I don't know why this, this has not been addressed sooner. I am going to address it if I get time. Like I, I just don't, I, yeah, I need about six months to design and create and just be left alone. No, not from you guys, but like from Nick. He needs to leave me alone. No, I'm kidding. But just, just, uh, how do I say that? That sounds like an insult. I don't mean to insult anyone. I love every one of you guys to death. Uh, but we are swamped. We're swamped. And we want to be swamped. Oh, it's a great we, problem. We have. love you guys. And we love our customers more than words can say. But, but when you try to make a living and then try to design these new products, it's very, very difficult. But what neat, what has to happen in the uh, in American Bowyers, European Bowyers, we've got to address the problem of designing uh, limb limb lengths that are that are suited for 25 inch draws, 26 inch draws, because these bows are set at a 28 inch platform, and so they do not perform well at a 25 inch draw. Okay, that's probably enough of that. I hope I'm not boring you guys. But, um, let's see here. What else we got? The repair would add carriage with that longbow. Yeah, that's a good thought, Chris. Yeah. Youth longbow is six to six and a half inches on gray site. Okay. Jeremy Tender sounds great. Would there be a time during the weekend I could come up and try a few? I'm not going to make the this week. I wish I could. Yeah, Jeremy, I'm here. I live here, so you can come anytime. Just shoot me a heads up. All my contact info is on the website. Um, you, can, you can Facebook message me, um, Instagram message me. You can get a hold of me a thousand different ways. But uh, yeah, you can come anytime. So, Steve Eckles, thoughts on positive filler versus negative filler? Watch the video yesterday. Bow your preferred negative filler. So, no. I just finished a ton of those Amazon bows and I have shot them all from negative tiller to extreme positive tiller to in but I, I played with tiller on them just to see where I liked it and how much it actually messed with it you have to have positive tiller you have to have positive if you tiller. want an arrow that will tune to a bow easily you have to have positive tiller or else you're you're just dealing with it, <laughs> trying to find the perfect arrow for it. And if, it's, yeah. If you build in reverse tiller or negative tiller, you are defining the physics of how the universe works. Now, if you... you got to think about your finger placement. Now, if this bowyer you're talking about, if he builds in negative or reverse tiller, you should find out where his shelf is in relation to the fulcrum of the bow. Because That's a huge... You need to know that before you say that before we say that he's absolutely wrong because that that's going to that's going to be huge cuz what tiller is is it's timing your timing those yeah. limbs it's like a timing belt for an engine yeah but you want them to hit the yeah. end of their string stroke at the exact same time yep. and so that's what tiller is so that yeah. you don't have one limb out running the other and it and tiller is completely relative to the finger placement on the string and where those fingers are in relation to the exact center of the pole, the fulcrum of the bow. So this bow you're, that you're talking about, if he, yeah, it just really depends yeah. on where his fulcrum is on his bow. That's what it depends on. So, do you have an Etsy shop? That looks like your mom, Sonia, Henry. That is my mom. Hey, Sonia. I can call her mom too, right? Yeah. Like that. She won't no? be here. Too, well, like my employee. I'm kind of like a father figure to you guys anyway. But and I'm even getting fatherly. kind of like a strange brother. But I'm even getting fatherly. I'm getting a fatherly figure. So, mom says, "Do you have an Etsy shop?" She knows I have one. Uh, we do have one. Yeah, we got an Etsy shop. Yeah, and it's got all kinds of cool blocks. And we lowered the prices two times this week, Bailey. Two times. Yeah, we're trying to sell them. You know, we're trying to give you guys a good yeah. deal. They're, they're all high quality pieces of wood. They're small blocks for knife builders, pin makers. Um, it's, it's been Bailey's project. She's done really, really well with it. She she does all the cleaning up the blocks herself. She cuts them, shapes them, sands them, clear coats them, labels them. She's done the whole Etsy store by herself. And so it's her project. She works for me here at Great Plains. She's our video lady and um, all of the above lady. 
she's actually just got her first bow. So, um, yes, we do have an Etsy shop. I agree with uh, Rex there. Uh, weird on survives. <laughs> you do give that off. <laughs> well, Nick. <laughs> I'm your favorite. You know, I, I know what you guys can call me from now on. You can call me your Funkle. <laughs> Fun uncle. See? Get it? I'm a Funkle. Well, technically you're my cousin, but... Yeah. <laughs> Just call me the weird Funkle. Fun uncle. Okay. Yeah, and on the resale value with the bow tags, that definitely is a... Tanya tags is trying to help. No, we appreciate that, Tanya. Thank you. Yeah. That... Seriously, having the bow tag on there will, yeah, help with resale quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? <clears throat> okay. Sorry, I'm having some nasal congestion today. What were we talking about? Uh. Yeah. Not me. Yeah. Okay. Well, we got four minutes left. And Ooh. Check out my Facebook page for the reworked bows. Yes! I'm, the the first handful of them went really, really smoothly. Do you have any left? I have one or two left. I gotta look at it. But he's gonna get in, what, yeah, 400 I've got, more? No. 400? No. I've got five more of those uh, three-piece longbows coming in. I'm working on getting the San Lita X8 recurves in. Mm-hmm. I'm testing out a couple of other Amazon bows. If you have Amazon bows that out of the box are just amazing and you have suggestions for me to try out, I'll give them a try. Am I leaning too close to you? Like, I feel like I'm leaning a little yeah, bit. Yeah, just a smidgen. Okay, I'm going to... Let me... <laughs> but... Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I think... You know, check out the Facebook page. I don't know where all it's linked. Nick Brand signed bows. Well, that, and once again, like every bow that Nick reworked, we're not going to sell you a crap bow. Yeah. It, no. it, it, we are going to make sure that before we even touch it, it has tremendous po right. potential. We're not going to rework a bow that we don't have a good feeling about. and we don't, Like that San Lita longbow, that thing will yeah, no. never be reworked. We may do a video seeing if we can improve it, but it does not have the potential to, to be a good starter bow for anybody. All I'm doing is I'm taking pretty good starter bows and I'm fixing all of the problems out of the box. And making them fantastic starter bows. Yeah, I'm building the yeah. perfect starter bow. Okay, your Facebook page. What's your fa Facebook page? Nick Brandstein Bows. N-I-K-B-R-A-N-S-T-I-N-E Bows. B-O-W-S. Okay. And it's a picture of me shooting a bow. Shoot as a bug dude. Cute as a bug, but full of bows. Yeah. The Etsy. Cute great. and cuddly. And what's the Etsy store? Great Plains Bow Co. Great. Okay, the Etsy store is Great Plains Bow Co. Um, and you know, I mean, we're we're wanting to get these blocks of wood into people's hands. So, I mean, I don't know if you wanted to buy all of them, we might work a deal with you. You know, if you're going to buy half of them, just send me a message. You know, yeah, send Bailey a message on Etsy there. And, We'll knock some money off, and you got it. We got tons of them, so we're going to be adding those all the time. Those are really like 50 Only bucks. Line, yeah. Bows. Only line models. I got to try those. I'll look into those. Try a Nick. Sure, bows are almost 200, but are good from the start. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. Fleetwood recurves. I got from Cabela's. I've never... Have you ever shot a Fleetwood? I don't think I have. If I'm think thinking it. right, those are the ones that look almost like a Samick. Yeah. I kind of I can picture them in my mind. I've seen them. I don't think I've ever shot one that I can remember. Um, so, all right, we've got one minute left. One minute. Anything that we want to say to everybody? Or? Um, we, we love you very much. <laughs> and let's see. Well, I do want to say that you know we. We would not be here for you guys. The support that you gave us on YouTube, that you give us. I know our channel's small, but there's so many genuine people that comment. I just go back at, at our comments, and I can't believe how positive they are. You guys are almost never negative on our comments. We just basically don't have negative comments. And that's a testament to the great people that are in traditional archery. 
and in this sport that we love so much. So um, we love all you guys, and um, ooh, if you would, like and share all our videos. If you send our channel to three people and those three people subscribe, and they do the same Boom, thing, shakalaka. then our channel will be huge, huge, huge pretty fast. Yeah. We want to be huge. Right, Nick? Yeah, I guess so. We want to be huge. <laughs> okay. All right, guys, we're going to sign off. Thanks again for joining, and uh, we'll see. We'll do another live stream in four or five weeks. Catch you next time. When I figure out how to edit it or end it. <laughs> <laughs>